Welcome to Three and Out with Jason and Kevin. I'm Jason. That's Kevin. And today we are joined by a very special guest, Bangalorean, who I just found out his name is Ron. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, as if you saw the video that we came out with earlier in the week, uh, we are going to be doing a special Star Wars show tonight where we are going to talk about different Star Wars characters and then who they, you know, kind of make their match with a Bengals player or coach or possibly a, uh, or possibly, a, you know, a, a player or coach from a different team. Um, uh, again, we're on the orange and black yeah. insider. It's all it's all season. Just saying, we're getting yeah. Busy. I know we're getting yeah. It's, we're getting weird. It, there's nothing to talk about right now. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we're uh, on on orange and black insider on YouTube. Anywhere we get podcasts, uh, you know, follow us, like us. Uh, welcome back again, uh, guys. How you guys doing? Good. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me on, guys. Absolutely. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. For doing all right uh, <laughs> because we have a guest. We're actually recording at a reasonable hour. Uh, yeah, so no, it's I know. Usually, it's not to, nine uh, o'clock or ten. And then, yeah, then not rush off to bed. Oh, no, good. Well, thanks for a <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, and then also, uh, we're with CincyJungle.com, SB Nation, Cincy and Bengal site, and sponsored by Eastgate Smiles Dental Care. As you can see, Kevin's already got his lightsaber and he's saying, "I'm sorry, I'm don't, I don't mean to ru ru ruin the surprise. I have them too up here. There we go. <laughs> but." Uh, but Kevin said I'm not allowed to play with my toys when, when he has his out. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite what I said. I know, I know. All right. Uh, so we're going to be doing this. Um, let's see. Kevin, if you want to go ahead and get started, just, yeah, whatever, man. This is just, it's off-season nonsense. Yeah. Uh, no, I feel like we're all just going to pitch whatever we pitch. We'll figure out where we're at. I feel like the first big debate, Joe Burrow, right? You're gonna immediately going to sure, go to yeah. Luke Skywalker. Immediately a new hope, the the second coming, et cetera, et cetera. And I think it probably is Luke Skywalker. I'm going to make a pitch. Prequel Obi-Wan Kenobi. Not the best at anything, but just solid across the board. General, leader, dry sense of humor. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like he has a lot more in common other than like the theme of it with Obi-Wan. Where are you guys at? I so think you're... I think you were spot on with Luke in the beginning, though. I just yeah. because for me, like I I know we have new Luke now that was older and he's in the like the newer movies and stuff, but like young Luke, because like Joe's young, Luke was young, trying to figure everything out. I feel like he fits in that realm. Even I think, God, I don't know. What about I don't know if you how deep you guys go into Star Wars lore, but like young Anakin. Yeah, yeah. I mean. We're both massive nerds, so I've oh, done. Yeah. I mean, I've watched everything, but Clone as, Wars. I I haven't done that. Okay, right. oh, <laughs> but I, think, I know that's what I think. Like young Anakin, you know what I okay. mean? I, yeah. I like that. So, personality wise, are we willing to roll the dice that he eventually turns evil and becomes a stealer? Oh no! no. <laughs> I don't even say that. That's not well, I mean, that's the arc, right? That's like physical pain. Yeah. <laughs> I <know. Ouch. laughs> Well, remember he did he did restore balance, I guess, depending on how you want to look at it. I mean, he did kill the emperor in the end, and yeah, yeah. you know it's funny. You always see these things like Luke dragged him out of the Death Star, like drag. Mm -hmm. I mean, you imagine that Darth Vader with the suit weighs five hundred pounds. Why didn't you just use the Force and just? <laughs> you know what I mean? Probably did to a certain extent. He's channeled it into his fingertips. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Instead of dragging him across the floor, up and down steps. <laughs> I imagine Vader's head hitting the steps as he's going down. <laughs> Uh, I got to say, I really like, so Ewan McGregor carried the original or the, the prequel trilogy, just oh, yeah. absolutely carried it. So, I mean, he put that whole franchise on his back. I like Luke as, uh, as, as, uh, as Joe Burrow, but the, without Ewan McGregor, that entire prequel trilogy wouldn't have been able, wouldn't have been watchable. Yeah. So I, I think I, I'll, I'll go that way, but either way, I, th I think they're, they're both good. I think yeah. the answer is probably Luke. I just uh, wanted okay. to pitch out a different, an alternative to see if uh, anybody felt it. But yeah, I think, I think minus it's it for me. It is either Luke minus the character arc later on or Young Anakin. So, but I think we're all landing on Luke. I think that's where we're. Yeah, at. yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, let's go, Luke. All right. So if we're gonna do the biggest good guy, then we gotta do the biggest bad guy. Uh, mm. Darth Vader. Who's Darth mm. Vader? I don't know. I know you pitched an idea earlier, but Darth Vader to me, oh my God, it's got it. It's like, I just want to say Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> sure. 
You know what I mean? I just want to say Pittsburgh, but I, I, you can't like say the whole, the whole team. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, like, you could go Roth, Roethlisberger or uh, yeah. Tomlin. Yeah, I almost want to say Tomlin. Yeah, because he's like the leader. Do you yeah. know what I mean of of the team? So he would be like I, I view the Steelers as the empire. So Tomlin would be that Vader. You know what I mean? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go uh, Andy Reid. And the reason I'm going to go with Andy Reid is because he's the leader of the Bengals' biggest roadblock right now. Yeah. And because I imagine that Andy Reid sounds the way that Darth Vader sounds when he walks up a few flights of steps. <laughs> that heavy breathing, you know, the, you know, trying to catch his breath and stuff like that. And uh, I, so I'm going to say Andy Reid. But you got, what about you, Kevin? Uh, if I'm the tiebreaker, I think I got to lean Steelers. I, I am uh, big on the anti uh, chief strain these days. I think most Bengals fans are, especially if you exist on Twitter. It's hard not yeah. to. Um, but uh, it's the classic nemesis, right? If we're going classic trilogy, if we're going Darth Vader, you got especially like all black Steelers. That's right. Um, yeah. There yeah. Steelers as a whole, Tomlin, if we're getting specific. But uh, Steelers of the Empire, let's put Tomlin as, okay. as Darth Vader. And then okay. for Andy Reid, I don't know if cheeseburgers are canon. I don't know if they have cheeseburgers in Star Wars. So that's <laughs> I don't tough. know. I don't know if they do. I doubt <laughs> it. I mean, without I without know. knowing, we really can't uh, put him in that universe. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't even. You know what? Exactly. Come to think of it, I don't know if they've ever really talked about food in Star Wars outside of the green milk. Yeah, just like ever... things here and there, right? You see them yeah. chowing at the at the cantinas. Yeah, but yeah. All the different granola bar looking things. Uh, exactly. Luke ate yeah. while training with Yoda. Yeah. Right. Or there's the stuff that Ray poured water in and yeah. it turned into oh, whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's but I've like never kind of crappy MRE. Yeah, I know. It's like not but good. I've never seen a hamburger in Star no. Wars. I can tell you that. So maybe, yeah, maybe it wouldn't be good. <laughs> um, all right. So we got Luke Skywalker. You got Darth Vader. Oops, I switched these up. Um, so let's go to Obi Wan then. But let's do old man Obi Wan, the one that like Alec mm. Guinness Obi Wan, who was over it, who okay. didn't, you know, who's just like a uh, stupid Star Wars movies. Hmm. Old I mean, Obi-Wan. Mike Brown. Oh, okay. Coach, I wasn't going coach, but yeah, I like that. I was thinking okay. player, but I think. I think Mike Brown's a good – I think he's good there. I think yeah. he's uh, he's older. He – you know, I don't know how much he's guided, you know, Troy and Katie Blackburn and doing what they're doing now. I don't think anyone really knows how – like what kind of hand that Mike Brown has in the team as it, yeah. as it is right now. But uh, he fits the category for being like a mentor kind of thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I get that. I get that. I yeah. like that. Not- I do – I, I can hard pitch this if we want to like try to sell this and that he is there in the beginning when Luke Skywalker shows up, Luke Skywalker then takes the torch for the entire trilogy yeah. and Obi-Wan dies, AKA Mike Brown kind of leaves the public eye, leaves it to Katie disappears for the next two movies. I don't know. Okay. I feel like well, okay. But is no, she's too young and I'm thinking too deep. Would Mike Brown be Qui Gon Jinn, who okay. trained Obi Wan, who's Katie, who then trained Joe Burrow? Not really. Is Luke? That's too deep, isn't it? <laughs> we're, we're going no, down a pretty no. big rabbit hole there. <laughs> when, no, 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 no. When discussing goofy nerd stuff, there is no. Yes, yeah, exactly. Deep. I, mean, I think this is I all that's semantics. Solid. That's where this stuff lives and breathes. <laughs> yes, I think Mike Brown, Obi Wan. That's a solid selection. I all like right. the coach direction. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Um, so we got Luke Skywalker, Darth has, Vader, Obi Wan. If anybody Go else ahead. has specific pitches, throw them out. But uh, I've been thinking about this, and I've got a handful. I don't want to just take the entire yeah. uh, the, the mic oh, though. Go 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 go. Uh, we got three bounty hunters, and I, in my opinion, you have to assign them to edge guys. If there's a bounty hunter on the team, it's the guy who takes down the quarterback. Okay. But we just got to like- figure out which one fits who. Okay. So let's do with the OG bounty. Let's do Bo- Boba Fett. Boba right? Fett. Okay. Who's like Boba that. Fett? 
Dude, he's pretty quiet. I got my little one here, just so you're aware. But um, he, so he's pretty. Boba Fett's quiet, in in most of the older movies. Um, I'm looking. I'm I'm thinking about our Edge guys. Man, okay, Boba Fett, quiet, just gets the job done. I I know who I think. I I personally think it's Trey Hendrickson. Okay, I was gonna I, say Trey though. What, why? I don't know. I don't. Trey Hendrickson doesn't talk very much. I, yeah. I I've seen Hubbard interviews. I you know when yeah. when the 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 fumble return in the playoffs, you know, Hubbard had his arms up and was yelling, you can't catch me. But Trey Hendrickson, I don't know if, even if I've heard him talk before, I probably have. That's. But the that's other thing be. is, is like he takes off his helmet and he's got like this, Trey Hendrickson has this like baby face, you know what I mean? Where he looks yeah. a lot younger than you would expect him to. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen the original Boba Fett take his helmet off. And I just uh, yeah. behind the scenes, where you tell him like you put that helmet back on, man, because you look you don't look menacing at all without the helmet <laughs> on. So I say Trey Hendrickson for that, for that reason. I I agree with that. That almost came out of my mouth, but I don't know. I went I last second pivoted to Hubbard. I think that's the better fit. Okay, Kevin, what do you think? Yep, I I agree. Uh, just for us, add another reason on the pile. I feel like it also fits like thematically. But if that's much more a pure bounty hunter, uh, yeah. where Hendrickson is pure edge rusher. If we're like putting yeah. Hubbard in there, if, let's just roll on into it. Hubbard to me is uh, the Mandalorian, much more okay. jack of all trades. You know, he does bounty hunting, yes, but he's a merc. He's a bunch of different stuff. Yeah. Um, also, leader of you're starting to emerge as one of the leaders of the defense. The Mandalorian. If you're watching the show, he's emerging mm -hmm. as the leader of the Mandalorians. I like that. All right, throwing it out there. I do like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so Sam Hubbard is 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 a Jin Jin Jarin. Din. I'm not going to write it. Jin N J A R N. I I'm just going to write Mando because yeah, that's yeah. Jin Jarin. All right, Sam Hubbard it is. All right. What's your, so what's your third bounty hunter? I'm curious to hear. Yeah. You. Uh, if we could go all the way back to Django. Okay. Okay. So got... uh, if we have somebody who fits that, uh, Miles Murphy, Osai. I like. I like. Um, Osai as Django. I do like that because I always thought like Bobo was kind of that menacing guy. Uh, whereas like in the the um, prequels, um, Django was kind of I always felt like he was quick with the jetpack moving around. And, and I like Osai with that fit. I think that's a good yeah. fit. For Django. Yeah, I can is see it, that. Um, So Django Fett is technically the father of the entire. Yeah. Uh, group of stormtroopers. I'm. I, I don't know. I mean, the entire. I guess the first generation of stormtroopers. I'm thinking like, is there? I don't want to get in like Bengals players' personal business, but like, is there a guy who has like you know like a? Is, is there a guy who has like eleven kids like Philip Rivers used to have, like has not used to have, but how he has? Where, but I can't think of anything like a big family guy. Uh -uh. I don't know, but not that uh, I know of. Yeah, it almost like go even further back i don't know like because like i feel like one of the fathers of us having a heck of a d-line is like geno atkins but there you go i think we're, I think we're going go. i think we're going more edge maybe i don't know i i, I, I don't see, know geno you, atkins you know, is a great is a idea <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see, because geno was that guy i mean like and like if you're probably we're close to the same age if you're thinking like D lines. I know there was guys before Gino, obviously, and they're around Gino, but like he was kind of the father of oh the Bengals yeah. D line. So like yes. Django being the father of all the clones and Boba, you know what I mean? So that that kind of I like that. Yeah, when I'm I think sold. of when I I'm think sold. of like that, a, that's a, that's a pitch. Yeah, when I think when I'm when I think of like a the you know like the the new era of Bengals defensive greats, <laughs> Gino Atkins is the first name that comes to mind. So I'm I'm totally down with Gino Atkins as Django Fett. For sure. Is it is it J A N J A N G O, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. You got it. All right. Um, so we got the all right. So Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, Obi-Wan, Boba Fett. I think it's time to go bad guy again. Yeah. So why don't we do ah oh, man, I just totally blanking on his name now. What's the guy with the red face that killed Qui-Gon? Uh, Darth Maul. Darth Maul, yeah. Wow. yeah Darth I can't Maul. remember that. Darth Maul. All right. So Okay. Looks cooler. In my opinion, the the trilogy, the the prequel trilogy, would have been a thousand times better had they not killed Darth Maul off in the first episode. Yeah. Had he been able to survive or whatever, would have been so much better if there was more than one big fight with him. Oh, um, dude, he's 
he's Lamar Jackson, man, to me. There you go. All right. Think, All right. Just, like, cause Maul, like his whole race is like this athletic, like, like crazy athletic acrobatic race. You know, you know so much more about this. No than I, than I do. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, but like, and then like, he's, he's, I know he fought Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon, but like also eventually he fights later on. Like it, he's Lamar to me. You know what I okay. mean? Yeah. All he's right. Like he's like that threat that is, or was there. Uh, but things have happened. Yeah, he got like cut in half, but like, is he dead? You know what I mean? Like, Lamar got okay. injured, but is he done? Like, will he come right. back? You know what I mean? I get that. Yep, I dig it. I'm all about. I I'm all about it. the multiple injuries angle too, because yeah. that's yeah. A, kind of a Darth Maul thing of getting of getting beaten and injured in some horrific way, and then Absolutely. coming back just scary all over again. <laughs> and I and and I correct me if I'm wrong, but Darth Maul survives being cut in half and has like metal legs. Like oh, you yeah. see him at the end yeah, he of, uh, so much Han crazy, Solo. He has like Solo. crazy spider robot legs and he loses his mind. Lamar oh, yeah. maybe lost his mind trying to I don't yeah. know, negotiate his own contract. There's a lot Something. to go. There's a lot to go up there. I'm good. I'm, I'm down with that. I like that. I like, I like that idea a lot. Yeah. Lamar Jackson for, for Darth Maul. I, I really like that a lot. All right. So. Oof, boy. All right. Well, so we kind of have Luke's. We we already discussed that Luke Skywalker or the the prequel trilogy Obi Wan would be Joe Burrow, right? Or are we going to separate those two out? I, I think it should just be Luke Skywalker, Joe Burrow. I mean, I think okay. yeah, I think it's the obvious okay. pick. I was trying to be, you know what I mean. I was trying to <laughs> be a little different, but the truth is, it fits. He's yeah, second coming, save the day. Come on. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so how about then Obi Wan from the prequel trilogy? They're just cooler than cool. Yeah. Takes takes uh, takes Anakin under his wing, you know. Yeah, just awesome guy. Kind of single handedly. I mean, he doesn't. He's he very... you know cuts Anakin in half or whatever you want to say. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, he, he, the only guy capable, I guess, of of cutting down Anakin was was Obi Wan. So yeah. so here's, who's who's that going to be? Here's my pitch. Okay, Obi Wan was a coach to Anakin. Okay. And I know I'm, I'm mixing Anakin and Luke together here because I know he said Luke for Joe Burrow, but Obi Wan is a coach to Anakin and a, and a, well, he coaches, he helps with Luke too. He helps with Luke too. The only person that can make or break Joe Burrow probably is coaching with play calling is older Obi Wan, because I think that's what we're on, Zach Taylor. Sure. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, now we're doing the prequel trilogy. Oh, Obi- okay. Obi-Wan. Yeah. But but that works though because Zach Taylor is one of the youngest coaches in the NFL. Yes. Yes. I mean, exactly. yeah. I I I totally I yeah, totally okay. buy that. It works. It works for both. Yeah, then. It yeah, works. He's still yeah. coaching these Jedi's throughout. Right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. He's like, seen his. Go ahead. Sorry. No, you're good. Like if you train the Jedi wrong, he's gonna get killed. <laughs> you know, yeah. If you, yeah. If you yeah. call crappy plays or you don't have a good game plan, Joe Burrow's gonna get killed. You know what I mean? I get it. I dig it. I, I can't think of anyone better for uh, the prequel trilogy, the the Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan, than Zach Taylor. Yeah. And he's still he's still very cool. Yeah, still Taylor. very cool. Zach Taylor's cool, too, man. Yeah, it is. You I mean, him at Mount Lookout Tavern giving out oh, yeah. balls, screaming sure. at Mike. Hell yeah. Sure. Does, you know, and I, I don't want to like Marvin bash here because I, I, I will always appreciate what Marvin Lewis did for this yeah. franchise. I He came in here and he changed the culture of the Bengals over the course of uh, 10, 15, however many years. Yeah. Does does Marvin Lewis, you know, in 2015, Andy Dalton doesn't get hurt and the Bengals beat the Steelers? Does Marvin Lewis take all those game balls? I, the, to me, I I kind of don't think so. He seems oh, no. he seems more of like a straight lace. You know, Lou, Zach Taylor seems kind of loose, a member of the community, you know what I mean? In yeah. a way that Marvin Lewis never really seemed to be. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna say I, I thought I love it. I love Zach Taylor for for you and McGregor's Obi Wan for sure. Kevin, what do you think? Uh, I'm all about it. I I think you both sold it really really well. Um, the perpetual coach because yep. that's kind of even because even you, you somebody else said it, but like even in the prequel trilogy, that's what he was like. Yeah. Once you get past the first uh, movie, he's raising Anakin up. Now he's raising Joe Burrow up. Yeah, I got it. I'm all about it. I like it. Yeah. Has yep. Taylor has Coach Taylor ever grown a beard? Not that I know of. He needs to but he'd look good in a beard. I yeah. think he would too. I do. I, I do. think he would. 
Yeah. We think he yeah. can grow a beard. I'm not being like, yeah. he just looks like the type of guy who couldn't grow a beard. What is that supposed to mean, Kevin? <laughs> Nothing, Jason. I want to know, know what that means. <laughs> an amazing full beard. This this, this is two weeks for me, buddy. <laughs> Come on, you don't have to make me feel worse than I already do. Hey, look uh -oh. at this, though. Look what I got up here. Oh, yeah. Look yeah, what yeah. I got up here. There you go. <laughs> All right. So kind of rolling through these characters. Uh, do we want to do Jar Jar? Is he a big enough... Oh, See a yeah. big enough character, so let's do I Jar Jar. Am a huge Jar Jar stand. I love Jar Jar. Okay. Oh, okay. Before we get into who is Jar, can you explain? Can you defend your Jar Jar fandom, please? Dude. Okay. So everybody, I there was he was problematic for some people. Got it. Okay. Okay. I, I empathize or sympathize, whatever the right word is there for you. Some people are they live kind of in this world, and I'm not insulting these people, but. They live in this world. They're like, hey, Star Wars can't be funny. It has to be. It has to be serious. Like, you can't be funny. There can't be any comedic relief. But like, it's a huge universe. There are idiots that we walk past every day in this world. So there's got to be at least one in the Star Wars universe, and that's Jar Jar. And he's hilarious. Okay. Like, he's absolutely hilarious. And the hijinks he gets into, and they're like fighting the droids, and he ends up just like slaughtering droids left and right knocking over tanks and and putting up shields and stuff like he, he was just such a good character for me okay so yeah. i i'm going to respectfully disagree and the only re and i have no issue with with comedic relief i think yeah, that it's yeah, needed yeah. I, you know like you just look at the mcu there's some very like mm -hmm. ragnarok was a great movie uh you know and it it deals with uh, an entire culture almost dying out and a planet being destroyed oh yeah but it, but you know there were funny moments and i totally agree that, that they needed some sort of comedic relief but uh just the talking this the misa 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 jar jar misa blow up storm just oh my gosh it was just beyond annoying and uh i i, I wasn't i wasn't totally into it but he did i think another thing that bothered me is correct me if i'm wrong but he did get a medal at the end of episode one correct oh yeah yeah, yeah. chewy never got a medal Chewie's done a thousand times more, and you know what? That's not true. Chewie got a medal. Technically, he hasn't. He has he, in the in the original trilogy. He never got a medal. He got Leia's medal at the end of Episode Wait. Nine, I think. He's not on the stage with him when they're getting medal. The He's standing on the side of the stage, and he just yeah. roars. He doesn't get a medal. Luke, really? Luke Han Solo. And I think that's it. I don't think anyone Look, else gets one between I, the oh, two. Oh, I'm watching I'm not, that tonight. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not coming down uh, on Chewie here, but just by the numbers alone, Jar Jar did way more than Chewie ever oh, did. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> he wrecked the house. Without he Chewie. He won that battle. Without yeah. Chewie, uh, Han what? and Luke don't break Leia out of prison. Oof. Like, yeah, none of that happens. one. Yeah. Oh, come on. Come I'm on. not... I, I like Chewbacca better than Jar Jar Binks. I'm not saying otherwise. Oh, yeah, but if we're just talking yeah. a numbers game here, Jar Jar Binks okay. has, has the kill right. count. He's got right. probably yeah. a thousand droids. Okay, he's... so we got... We, we, I mean, you guys have made your case. I, I'm not going to say he's terrible. <laughs> I, he annoys me. He annoys me, but... <laughs> Which but, is but, so but, fair. So it is. Fair. Oh, yeah. I agree. I think he, he annoys a lot of people. But yes. but now, uh, who, who's your pick for who, who's Jar Jar Binks? Uh, Maybe somebody who does... Who does more for the team than than people realize? So maybe somebody like um, Michael Thomas, the safety. Someone who plays a lot of special. You know, Joe Bocci, yeah. guys who play special teams that you I don't even like, really think about. Anybody we pick, we're like mildly insulting. Oh, I know. Yeah. I totally agree. I'm not saying that I think any of these guys are annoying. I'm just saying they do more than people realize. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, so special teams to me, it screams special teams. Yeah, that's a good. I like that. I do like Michael Thomas. I'm trying to keep it on our roster and not and not branch out. Right. Hmm. I like that. Okay. I'll go with it. I don't feel like anything super fits Jar Jar because again, yeah. it does feel like an insult. <laughs> I, I, I want to pick somebody on another team and be like, "Ha, ah, you're Jar Jar," but like, yeah. I, don't, like <laughs> I don't know who to. It's like Kenny Pickett, Jar Jar, just like. He's here. He doesn't really belong. You know what I mean? He's the fourth quarterback in the in the AFC North, and he's kind of gets made fun of. You know what I mean? Like, is that a Jar Jar? I don't know. I'd have to see Jar Jar's hand size. They're huge. <laughs> um, yeah, semi-aquatic species, man. 
You got like yeah, well, yeah, he's got web thing. Yeah, he's got to swim. So yeah, it's not it. It can't be. It can't be. Yeah. Kenny. Kenny Pickett's hands would never keep him up in the water. That's true. Right. Um, okay, and and I'm going to change. I said so. We we I I do think it's special teams. I I'm going to get instead of Michael Thomas. I think it should be Stanley Morgan. Stanley okay. Morgan is a special teams ace. He's been. Yeah. I think he was just like voted one of the most important special teams guys, like top <laughs> ten special teams guy. I think oh, it was him. So awesome. I'm going to say I'm going to say Stanley Morgan. I like what that. Do you, what do you guys think? Yeah, because we literally laid it out and said Jar Jar didn't. He was just huge in that battle. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like he wasn't appreciated for it. You know, special teams is kind of underrated. Yeah, I like that. Okay, cool. So I'm I'm making it clear on here and. I'm gonna make it clear on here that this <laughs> not an insult is not an insult. Uh, so, yeah. okay. So, all right. Um, who else you guys got? Oh man, uh, I'm, gonna... I'm gonna pitch Jamar Chase for Han Solo. I like that. Okay, and all right. Incredibly cool and flies the fastest spaceship yep. in the galaxy. Yeah, I like. I right. made it yeah. straightforward. I I feel like it's a it's not a not a creative pitch, but come on. All right. All right. I mean, he did. He did make the Kessel run in less than twelve parsecs. Yep, which is impressive. So, um, you know, parsecs is a real thing. Yeah, but it's a distance. I think it's not a yeah. unit of time. Yeah, Something I like I that, could so. I could explain why this still makes sense if we want to get like in the lore, but I I am not going to do that to the people <laughs> listening. At why all. not? Why not? <laughs> this is what anyone listening at this point is a huge Star Wars fan. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. So, so what is it? Parsec what, is the... impressive because the Kessel run involves a bunch of black holes. So yeah. he skimmed as close as possible to black holes to shorten the distance. Mm -hmm. okay, I Which actually that. makes I sense for Jamar cool. Chase yeah. as well because half of what makes him so good is his angles. Yeah, yeah, I, I get he always it. picks I out like the it. perfect like angle. I like it. He does have that extra gear that uh, that he seems to find. That one when I think of uh, the Chiefs game where he caught that it was a little out route and he. I took that angle and, and beat like five guys to the edge and scored in the uh, AFC championship or no, no, that was the, it wasn't the AFC championship game. That was week 17 in 2021 when they won the AFC North. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, Han Solo, Jamar Chase, just awesome. And then, you know, that makes really good sense because you got Han Solo and Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Great buddies. And oh. you got Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, great buddies. It's perfect. I got, I got Chewie. Okay. All right. My Chewy, my Chewy's Ted Karras. Ooh, it it doesn't, like it doesn't super fit on the player side when you're trying to like match them up. Like you know, you just said right there, Jamar and and him. But Chewy is like a big kind of sweetheart. Okay. But sure. if you if you get in his way, he'll rip you in half. You know what I mean? Like right. it, I don't know if you guys saw Solo. Did you see Solo? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. Like when he was down in the pit. Like he was ready to rip Han in half. You know oh what yeah, I mean? yep, and yep. It's just like that's that's, that's my uh, Chewy. I dig that's it. the exact same energy that pit scene is the exact same energy of Ted Karras yeah. uh, after the Titans game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah walking off the field. Exactly yeah. where my mind was. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I see it. I when Chewy, you know, Chewy's a lovable puppy until he's uh, fired up, and then he's yeah. capable of pure mayhem. So yeah, I I, I really like that. Chewy is Ted Karras. I think that's great. Oh yeah, All right. you could you could make an argument for a lot of our offensive linemen, but I think Ted, oh, yeah. like he's like, yeah, that's the one. Yep. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm trying to think some other. Uh, I'm trying to think some other Star Wars characters that I know we're. I mean, there's thousands of them, so I know we're leaving. Oh, I'll tell you what. Let's go. Uh, let's go with Ray. Okay. It's R E Y. I think it is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's go yeah. Ray. And for Ray. me, I think. Ushering this new era of Star yeah. Wars in, perfect. it's got to be Katie Blackburn, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't even need an argument. That's perfect. You just said it. New era of Star Wars. New era of Bengals. Hundred yep. percent. Yep. Yeah. I I think you know, and like like we said, I I don't know what what Mike Brown's involvement is with the team, but I think it's fairly clear to say that. I mean, I'm sure he still is involved heavily, but I think it's it's clear fairly clear to everyone that yeah. uh, Katie Blackburn is is probably behind the reins of, of most everything, you know, just day-to-day -day yeah. operations. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So how about we go back to bad guys again and we go, uh, Kylo Ren. Ooh. Okay. Younger. He's so cool though. I like yes. this. Some people he is like very him. cool. 
I love Kylo oh. Ren. And there's one scene in particular that that made Kylo Ren for me a great bad guy. And that was in, I guess, episode seven when mm-hmm. he was told that someone so-and-so escaped. And he just took his lightsaber like a petulant child and slashed yeah. up a whole bunch of monitors that the Empire probably spent hundreds of thousands of credits or whatever their currency is. Yeah. Because he's a child, a petulant child with that kind <laughs> of power is terrifying. Yeah. Oh, so okay. yeah, that's that's how I saw Kylo Ren. Now, of course, he makes his arc where he changes everything in the end. Uh, but the bad guy Kylo Ren, to me, I liked him. I powerful. Powerful and scary. Maybe that's George. Tough. Maybe, you know what? Maybe T.J. Watt. Oh. T.J. Watt or, or Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett has has done it longer yeah. than T.J. Watt, and I don't know if, if he's kind of getting on the wrong side of, of the age well, thing here. Okay, I but, like the Garrett. I like Garrett because uh, Garrett swings helmets. Yes, Kyle he does. Ren, That's, Ren, true. Ah, yes. That's true. That's true. That's very be true, Garrett, dude. I think Garrett. too. I think it does. I so think it Kylo does. Ren literally smashing that helmet. This is amazing. I like it. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. gotta be Garrett. That's <laughs> yep. perfect, man. That's that's a really good one. I like that one a lot. Uh, let's see. Kevin, you got one? Uh Mike Hilton, Ahsoka Tano. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. Little yeah. underrated when first entered the league, knows how to use the smaller size to play to their advantage, comes out of Hacks. nowhere and just wreck shop. Hacks a punch. I love it. Okay, so <laughs> All right, Ahsoka Tano is going to be Mike Hilton. All right, I did that. I did that with the double lightsabers, right? Yeah, I think that's a good one. Yeah, spelling these is a nightmare. Ahsoka's a dual threat to lightsabers. So is Mike Hilton. He can he can run in blitz, get you off the edge, and he can also play corner. And I mean, I like that. (laughs) Mike Hilton. I was actually talking about this weekend. Mike Hilton is is so good as a uh as a slot corner because he's basically you know they play the Bengals play in the nickel mm-hmm. like all all defenses in the NFL now they play in the nickel probably 85 percent of the time yeah um and he is almost like having <laughs> an extra linebacker yeah uh yeah. that you know a really fast linebacker that and because he's just as good I mean watching him you know we talked a lot about what DJ reader did against um uh Derek Henry in, in those, in, you know, against the Titans. And he was incredible without DJ reader, you know, Derrick Henry may go off, but Mike Hilton was in the backfield all game long. And there were several times, not several, but there were a few times that Mike Hilton brought down Derrick Henry by himself, yep, you yep. know, just great tackler, just wrapped him up around the thighs, just, you know, just yeah. knows how to, how to use his body. But yeah, I, I, I like it. I like the Osaka, I, Us- Usaka, whatever, Tano, whatever, you know, it's Mike Hilton. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, just to bring, I always, you always hear about players like, oh, they're small, but they don't play small. Yeah. My yeah. whole thing with Mike Hilton is he actually does play small. He understands his size and uses it to his advantage. He is elusive more than you think he was. Yeah. And this is a man who understands like, uh, some trifical force and leverage. When you watch the way he plays, it is, he has a slightly different style than almost anyone else at that position. And it's because he's learned how to use every single ounce of his frame yeah. to leverage on giant dudes and still bring them down. Okay. Yep. I like that. Yeah, I like that. I like the idea. Uh, you know, we got to do Yoda. We haven't yeah. done Yoda. And then I got three I can rapid fire. Let's do Yoda okay. and then we'll rapid fire. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, we got Yoda. He's five million years old. Yeah. Five. He's tiny. He's green. He doesn't do anything. <laughs> outside of talking and stuff like that until we see him in the prequels when okay. he yeah. acts like uh just uh I don't even know how to describe it just jumping off of stuff like a madman with his lightsaber and it was awesome to see mm-hmm. but uh Yoda will be tough Yoda's tough cuz I I don't really differ I mean you see him in the prequels Yoda, but he's still walking Yoda. good Yoda's not tough Yoda okay. is he's tough. Paul, he's Yoda. it's Paul Brown a founder of Okay. The oh. Jedi Order as a whole, yeah. Okay. Trained All right. everyone was in was like incredibly important to like the very Yoda foundational wasn't... concept. Yeah, okay. it was set of the council. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know that. All right. I just yeah. 
figured yeah. he was an old Jedi. All right. And See, then, this, I'm you not know, as dies and, but like his lessons still reverberate through. Just, I mean, we're talking Paul Brown. Like he literally invented yeah. about half of football at this point. Like, well, yeah. yeah, I like that. Did you know that uh, Paul Brown was the first coach to put microphone or uh, uh, a receiver in the quarterback's helmet so he could talk to him? There you go. Yep. Yeah, he got in trouble for that Revolution. too. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah. All right. All right. So I, 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 I like it. years later. Like Yoda yeah. is Paul Brown. I like it. And it's also, uh, he's also, you know, no longer with us, which makes <laughs> total sense. So I, I dig it. All right. All right. Uh, so you said you had three rapid fire. What do you got? All right. So I've got CP3O and R2D2. Oh, yeah. We got to do them. CP3O is Brad Robbins. R2D2 is Evan McPherson. Okay. Sure. I like that. But if you have an argument for other guys, I got it. And then the emperor is Bill Belichick and just will always Bill be yeah. Bill Belichick. Yeah. In my, yeah. I totally agree with that. All right. So C3PO being Brad Robbins, our new punter. I just uh, think C3, he, he yeah, looks like him. He does. <laughs> C3PO <laughs> is C3PO is the nerd of all sorry you know he's the nerdy one that kind of gets on everyone and i'm not saying that brad robbins is a nerdy guy but if you yeah. saw brad robbins on the street would is your first thought of oh that guy must play professional football no. it would at all because i no. you know i i would know it's brad robbins because i know what brad robbins looks like but while joe burrow can't go to kroger at any period of time brad rock brad robbins can walk around kroger all day yeah. long so yeah i'm gonna say i i agree with that kevin what do you think uh i think both fit i especially like the r2d2 one uh McPherson and RGT2 both share a very similar, like, plot line of this guy should never be as important as he is. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, then I suddenly know. comes out of nowhere and saves the day. Like, he does, all how the many time. times did we see both those characters, talking about McPherson <laughs> like he's a character, but both yeah. those uh, people uh, come out of left field to save the day in yep. some kind of way that he's like, well, no, it's not, it's not going to be them who does it. It's going to be Joe Burrow who does it. It's going to be yeah. Obi-Wan who does it. Uh, yeah. No, it's R2-D2. No, it's well, Evan McPherson. Think about it. Like, all the, the Jedi and everybody's, like, fighting and is just, like, exhausted and killing people all around him and tackling people all around him. Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, McPherson comes in and just kicks it, right? And with R2-D2, it's the, it's the fighting and the, and the shooting and the, the lightsaber duels. And then R2-D2, like, opens a door and that saves the day. Like, yep. it's like, it's like, yep. like, oh, okay. Let me just... And then it's like, yep. oh, the whole story changes. A... The whole story changes. We go to the playoffs. You know what I mean? We win playoff games. Like, it's like, I like that. Yep. I think it's great. I think that Evan McPherson being R2D2 is perfect because R2D2 saves the day so many times, even yep. when he's not supposed to. Stay here, R2D2. It's like, nah, I'm going to go save the day. You won't even know about it. The only reason people know about it is because his camera's following me around. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I, I think it's perfect. Evan McPherson, you know, oh, it looks like we're going to the Super Bowl, steps yep. up. Yeah. You know, and then Emperor Palpatine. Uh, Darth being Darth Sidious, I think, I, I I do I agree with you. I think it's I think it's Bill Belichick until, yeah, somebody steps up and proves otherwise. So I mean, he is. Well, here's the question for you: Who was it? Was it Bill or was it Tom that won six trophies? Or or do you think it's just a combination of both? I yes, but. I just see Bill with the hood on. The yeah. Hood, you know, he's yeah. Like, you know what I mean? He talks like that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, I just, like, to me, like, that's him. Yeah. And Tom uh, constant the, cheating the, allegations. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tom was the, Brady was the weapon. So, like, okay. maybe Brady we could be Vader in that situation. But There you go. There you go. I mean, like, I, pick I, another Sith Lord, I guess. I also see, uh, I also see Bill Belichick sitting in his office with his hood on and then someone's like, Oh, Mac Jones is here to see you. And he just goes, excellent. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I see, I absolutely see that. Yes. He's like on the sideline and Bernie's like, we should do this. He goes, do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can see it. I can see it. Uh, you know, we, we kind of, a lot of the ones we've gone through, anybody really obscure that you guys can think of, <laughs> just really obscure characters in star Wars. Just what, maybe let's do one more. Let's pull a guy to left field that half the people listening to this will just lose him right down the way. Who? Oh, Who are we talking about? Yeah. Who we got? Just one more. I'm thinking clone troopers. Like I'm going all over the place right now. I want I want Andy Dalton on this board. Okay. I'm yes. to figure out who Andy Dalton is. And I want it to be 
I like Danny Dalton. So to sure, me, yeah. it's a positive character. And I'm trying to think of who it is. Like, cause he didn't, there wasn't like this, like huge, like handoff from Dalton to Burrow or right. bottom, everything he knew. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like that, but like, I'm trying to figure out who Dalton is. Let's see. I'm trying to think if there's any redheaded. Well, the, yeah. the guy in the, in the video game, I don't know if we're going to count that. Al Kestis. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's, he's uh, too badass. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Cool, I think. <laughs> Andy Dalton overachieved his entire career. Yeah. He's absolutely overachieved. So I'm trying to think of someone who maybe wasn't we're going, supposed we're going to be as good cut. as they were. I'll go Captain okay. Rex. I know. That's where I wanted to go. But I'm trying to think. Red like Rifle was... just gets the job done. Definitely yeah. outplayed uh, his, like, uh, yeah. Is standing being drafted to the second round, but he was never yeah. a Jedi. He was never going to be the one to, you know, save the galaxy the way Burrow is. But he was the the soldier that was out there grinding and out, Dalton. Yep. with what he had. You know what I mean? I like that, and I, I almost I'm glad you said that because I was like, I was trying to like correlate it like because Rex was like a a mentor almost to like Ahsoka, and I was trying to like match the players up. But I'm going to throw that out and agree 100. percent Captain Rex, I like that. Okay, I dig it. I I, I don't know anything about. I've never watched. That show, I don't know anything about Captain Rex, but it, I it can't. Still holds up I can't argue anything. Time. It's good. Yeah, okay. it's a cartoon, so it's kind of like, oh man, do I gotta watch this? But you watch it, and you're like, oh okay, this is awesome. Oh no, <laughs> I have no problems with watching cartoons. Yeah. I watch cartoons all the time. I just gotta pick the right ones. All right. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I'll we're uh, coming up on the deadline, but I'm very, very happy with this list. What do you guys think? I love. No, it. I'm very it's happy fun. with it too. I think it's good. I think there's it's a, good. There's a billion other characters we can oh, do. I know. This is oh, a great God, list. we could go forever. Absolutely, yeah. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let, let's do. We're just going to do a word from a sponsor real quick, and then I just have a couple questions uh, for you real quick before we wrap up. Sound yep. good? All right, we'll be right back. Eastgate Smiles Dental Care is a warm and welcoming environment where expertise and customer service come together. As a local business, they love helping their fellow Cincinnatians manage their oral health and achieve a perfect smile. They pair the latest technology with years of experience to give you a smile worth showing off. They are dedicated to quality and convenience and can even perform dental crown procedures the same day in most cases. You like your smile, but they are here to help you love it. They personalize your care and match your needs. Call them today at 513-528-1150 to learn what they can do for your pearly whites. All right, so I the question I had is just how did you get into this? The, the Bengalorian thing. Like, did, did you, I mean, where, where'd the idea come from? You know, like, wh- how'd you get into it? Well, I mean, I'm a nerd to start a hundred percent. Um, I did like, I, I grew up playing sports and doing all that stuff, but like I'd go home, uh, after like going out and leaving it on the field, all that stuff. And I would play Xbox and I would, I'd look at comic books and you know what I mean? I would, I would I'd watch star Wars. I loved all that stuff. Um, so I think like, as and as an adult, so let me back up. As a as a as a young guy, like trying to fit in and be a part of like the sports crowd, like I don't really talk to my friends about that stuff. You know what I mean? But like sure. I was like closeted back here playing with lightsabers and stuff because it's freaking cool, man. Like it's cool, like it's fun, sure, yeah. it's awesome. Like who who doesn't want to pretend to be a Jedi, right, or or a bounty hunter? Uh, and then I think like uh, as an adult, like I always had the football background playing it, uh, coaching it, uh, and then being a fan of the Bengals. Uh, and I eventually realized like, dude, well, I don't, I don't really care what people think. You know what I mean? And so like, I just started making this stuff and, and doing the costumes and all that. Uh, and then, uh, the year before we drafted Burrow, uh, I made the suit. Uh, and that year we drafted Burrow when we drafted Burrow, I made a decision like, I'm just, I'm going to wear this to football games because I just, yeah. I think this is the turning point uh, and that's going to be fun. Um, and it hundred percent was just for fun, man. Like it, it was, there was no intention to even make a social media account. Um, but uh, I ended up doing it just so I could had somewhere to put the pictures. You know what I mean? Because uh, I was like, sure. this is ridiculous. Somebody might want to look at it. You know what I mean? So I put it up. Uh, and then uh, it just exploded. Uh, you know, I, I don't know why, I don't know how, timing, whatever. Um, but uh, and now I'm just on this awesome roller coaster, having fun with it. All right, so I got to show. Uh, let's see here. We'll get you out of here in a second. I, I do have to show um, this. 
Did you make all these? You yeah. put this on Twitter the other night. So yeah, uh, I'm assuming you have audio, a 3D printer. So the only, only audio listeners oh, yeah, yeah. we are showing all his helmets. Pop over yeah, to YouTube, yeah. at least check this part out. The helmets are very impressive. That's it. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Jason only one that, that this is mostly an audio row. medium. <laughs> yeah. The bottom row there is a Master Chief helmet uh, that I bought. And then the uh, what's next to that Master Chief helmet is a, a actual football face mask that somebody made for me with the Bengals B on it. But all the other okay. ones are printed out. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And then one more thing uh, uh, to show. Let's see. And then for audio listeners here, or uh, this, I'm going to show just this picture of, yeah. uh, oops, wrong one here. Uh, just this picture of uh, the Bengalorian on the, uh, the uh the throne there at uh yes so so how did this come did they ask you to do this or because that's this is one of the coolest pictures i've ever seen ever it's period. it's it's never gonna leave my profile picture i don't think because i, no. I agree with you i've never looked you're not gonna top it life. no i I've, I've i've done a lot of cool things but that is one of the coolest so the new jerseys were coming out um yeah. and uh I, I don't know if you guys saw when they like leaked and everything yeah. and, and they hit eBay yeah. and uh, I tried to, I know baby, she's talking to me here. And I tried to, I tried to buy one um, and uh, it didn't end up working out, but I ended up saying some nice things, I guess, about the Jersey and the Bengals kind of saw that. Give me one sec here. Sure. Oh yeah. yeah take no, your take your time. We, we, we got kids. We get it. We yeah. Get dude. It. But I ended up saying some nice things, uh, and a few other people were pretty positive about it when there was some stink about it. Uh, sure. So they ended up inviting us to the stadium to kind of look at them the day before they released. And uh, they had that there, and that's I awesome. sat on it, and uh, the photographer snapped a picture. That's awesome. All right. Well, we'll get you out of here so you can t- so you can take care of the baby. <laughs> happy, happy belated Father's Day <laughs> uh, to you. Molly and Joe. then also, also to get nice, nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, well, we hope you enjoyed our Star Wars special. We're going to be doing more stuff yeah. like this because there's nothing else to talk about. So yeah, uh, we really appreciate you joining us. Thank you very much. This was such a <laughs> dumb idea. I mean, like Kevin, uh, I don't, I say that like it was a terrible idea. It was a great idea for, you know, for nothing going on. Uh, yeah, but but this is there's no better there's been no better time in the in the history of pop culture yeah. where it's cooler to, more fun to be a nerd yeah. right now. It's Absolutely. great. It's being a nerd is cool. I mean, Dungeons and Dragons is on the very top of the hierarchy of nerddom, and it's cool now because of of uh, Stranger Things and all this stuff. So mm-hmm. we're all very cool. Yeah, so everybody knows we're <laughs> we're this is what cool looks like. Everybody, we were cool before it was cool to be cool. exactly. We are. We're we're hip, the hipster cool. Like we, <laughs> oh, I you just like Dungeon Dragon? I've been playing Dungeon Dragon for years. <laughs> I get it. All right. Well, hey, thank you for joining us again. Uh, we're on uh, Orange and Black Insider, brought to you by CincyJungle.com, sponsored by Eastgate, Eastgate Dental Care. Uh, thank you very much. Who day? Anytime. Who day? Who day?